So in a previous video, we've looked at the various types of energy store, eight different kinds of energy store an object might have. Uh, in this video, we're going to look very specifically at the kinetic energy store and how to calculate it, what it depends on, how much energy is in that store. So kinetic energy store, if an object has energy in its kinetic energy store, then it is moving. So this cyclist, for example, is moving, therefore it has some kinetic energy. Anything that is moving has energy in its kinetic energy store. So the amount of energy in its kinetic energy store depends on two things. It depends on the mass of the object and it also depends on the velocity of the object. And it actually depends much more on the velocity of the object. And you'll see why that is when we introduce the equation. So I've written this cyclist has got a mass of 70 and a velocity of 10 meters per second forwards. So let's look at the equation then. So kinetic energy, we usually represent energy with the letter E, okay? And kinetic energy, we can put a little subscript there to show that it's kinetic energy, so that's EK. And that's equal to half, half of the mass times by the velocity squared, okay? And this is why the velocity has much more of an impact on the kinetic energy, because it's squared. Now, just a little thing, mathematical thing that you need to remember, you need to do the v squared bit first. Why do you need to do the v squared bit first? Well, because of bid mass. You know, you've probably learned in maths that you have to do, you have to follow bid mass when you're calculating things. So you do i first, the indices first. Yeah. So you do v squared before anything else. Okay. So we've got the velocity squared. That's velocity. You've got mass. Okay, and then you've got kinetic energy. Okay. So let's figure out how much kinetic energy this cyclist has. So the cyclist is moving at 10 meters per second, so we're going to take we're going to take half times the mass times by 70 and then we're going to times it by the velocity squared 10 squared. So do 10 squared first, okay? Don't do half times 70 times 10 and then square it. That will give you the wrong answer. You've got to do 10 squared first. So 10 squared is 100. Then you're going to take half of the mass which is 35 times by 100. 35 times by 100 is 3,700, sorry, 3,500 by mistake. Uh, and that's given, that's got the unit joules, okay, capital J. So energy is always given in joules. We've looked at work done previously. Work done was given in joules as well. That's because work done is energy transferred. So energy transferred has the unit joules. Work done also has the unit joules. Okay. So that's the cyclist. Let's have a look at another equation here. Another question here. So have a look at this. Have a look at this question. Uh, a car with a mass of 1,500 kilograms is moving at 20 meters per second. The car applies its brakes, reducing the velocity to 5 meters per second. I want you guys to have a go at that. Unpause the video when you have, and I'll go through the answers. Okay, let's go through part A first. So describe the energy transfers involved. The car initially has some kinetic energy. Okay, so that's the kinetic energy store of the car. And then energy is transferred away from that. Work is done by the brakes to transfer kinetic energy out of the kinetic energy store and into the thermal energy store of the brakes and the surroundings. The brakes are going to heat up. Uh, the air around the brakes are going to heat up as well. So work is done by the brakes to take energy out of the kinetic energy store and into the thermal energy store of the surroundings. Okay, let's look at part B then. So how much kinetic energy did the car have before applying its brakes? So there's two answers that you might have got here. Okay, so for part B, maybe you got the answer 281,250 joules. Maybe you got that. Maybe you got the answer 168,750 joules, okay? Well, this one is the correct answer, 281,250 joules. Uh, 168,250 joules is wrong. And if you got that, then I think what you did was uh, you worked out the change in velocity, which is 15. It goes from 20 to 5. So you change in velocity is 15. Half times the mass times 15 squared will give you... Uh, 168,250. You can't do it that way because of the V squared term, okay? You've got to do it instead. You've got to work out the total kinetic energy before and the total kinetic energy after. So you've got to use the equation twice, basically, okay? So to get this answer here, 
you need to take. Let's get rid of that just so that you don't confuse yourself. Um, so initially, the car has got is, is got a velocity of 20 meters per second. Let's do this half times the mass, which is 1,500, times by the velocity squared, which is 20 squared. Okay, so remembering to do the 20 squared bit first. 20 squared is 400. Um, half times 1,500 is 750. So 750 times by 4,000 is 300,000 joules. Okay, so that's the initial kinetic energy. Now afterwards, we're going to do the same equation again, but with the new velocity. So half times the mass, 1,500, times by the velocity squared, 5 squared. The new velocity was 5, remember. Okay, so 1,500. Uh, so let's do 5 squared first, that's 25. Times that by 750, which is half of the mass. And you get an answer of 18,750. Okay, so significantly less significantly less yeah that's because of the v squared term so let's uh let's let's find a difference between them 300,000 subtract uh 300,000 minus 18,750 gives you the answer of 281,270 uh 250 sorry 250 joules okay there's your answer so remembering to do that v squared bit first and if you get a question like this, a difference in kinetic energy, you've got to do the whole thing. You've got to do the find the kinetic energy before, the kinetic energy afterwards, find the difference. Okay, uh, that's kinetic energy. I will see you in the next video.